We begin with a slip knot, and for this you're just going to wrap the yarn around two fingers and pull the thread in the back through. To tighten the knot, just pull on the individual threads. You're going to make a chain of seven, and to chain, you're going to yarn over and pull the th top thread through the bottom one, or the top loop through the bottom. So this is going to be the width of your brim. If you want it to be wider, chain more. If you want it to be narrower, chain less. But I made a chain of seven, and then we're going to use a Tunisian um, crochet technique in which we're going to cast on a foundation row. So you're going to skip one stitch, insert your hook into the next chain, and you're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. You're going to do this with all of the chains of, well, all of the stitches of your chain. You should have the same number of loops on your hook as you do the number of stitches you chained. So since I chained seven, I will end up with seven loops on my hook when I'm through. Your hook is going to look like this. And to make the right and left side of the brim even, you're going to pull on the, the hook to loosen up the tension. Next, you're going to do a return pass, so you're going to yarn over and pull through the first loop on your hook. And for the rest of the loops, you're going to yarn over and pull through two. And you'll do this until you are left with just one loop on your hook. Next, we're going to cast on a row of knit stitch, and for this, you're going to insert your hook into the second vertical stitch, and it's going to go right in between the two legs of the stitch. So your stitch is going to look like this. So insert your hook between the two legs of the stitch all the way to the back. You're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. Leave this loop on your hook. You're going to knit stitch in the remaining stitches of the row. So again, going into the next stitch, you're going to insert your hook between the two legs of the stitch all the way to the back, yarn over, and pull up a loop. And when you get to the end of the row, you're going to cast on into this final stitch. And then just yarn over and pull up a loop. Loosen up the tension on those last stitches by pulling up on your hook, and then you're going to complete a return pass. And that's yarn over, pull through one. And then for the rest of the row, you're going to yarn over and pull through two until you're left with just the one loop on your hook. Now the next row is going to be a knit stitch row, but we're going to knit uh, we're going to do the knit stitch from the back of the fabric towards the front. So this one was front to back. The next one is going to be back to front. So very similar to what we did, only we're going to loop our hook through the back of our fabric and insert it towards the front like this, yarn over, and pull up a loop. So this is a back knit stitch. So for those of you that are using the written pattern, this is going to be the BKS stitch. So the other one was the FKS, this one is BKS. Cast on the final stitch of the row, you're also going to insert your hook from behind the fabric towards the front, and then just yarn over and pull up a loop. Repeat the front and back knit stitches until your brim measures approximately 16 and a half inches if you're making 18 or adult small hat, 18 inches if you are making an adult large hat, or 13 inches if you are going to make this for a child. I highly recommend trying this on if it is something that you're crocheting for yourself or someone in your same size, or you know, if the child is nearby and you can just make a length of the brim and then just try it on, that's kind of the best practice. The elasticity of this brim is going to depend on the fiber that your yarn is made out of, so something that is made out of like 100% cotton is not going to stretch nearly as much as a fiber made with like a cotton and synthetic yarn blend or something containing wool, so you know, something to keep in mind. Once you've reached the length that you want for your brim, you are going to close the round and we're going to just crochet it together. Take a look at your brim on the side where your foundation row is or where your initial chain began. You're going to want to insert your hook into these middle stitches. So the first thing you do is just insert your hook into the topmost stitch. Make sure that your brim is not twisted. I say this a lot, but it happens to me all the time. So you're just going to slip stitch into the top of the brim. And then you're going to find the first knit stitch of the row, and you're just going to cast it on as a knit stitch. So insert your hook all the way into the back. And now on the first few rows of your brim, just find the centermost, like that, the centermost knit stitch, insert your hook through, and then you're just going to yarn over and pull through uh, both sides of the brim. Once you have two loops, you're going to yarn over and pull through two to single crochet. So we'll do it again in the next stitch. So knit stitch onto one end of the brim, go to the foundation row or the very front part of the brim, find that 
what is it, the second knit stitch? God, this is a lot more difficult to explain with words, but kind of watch what I'm doing here. So just find the knit stitch, insert your hook through the back of the fabric towards the front, and then you're going to close as a single crochet. So I'm going to let the camera roll for a minute so you can watch what it is I'm doing, because apparently I'm having difficulties explaining it in words. I think I need maybe another cup of coffee. <laughs> so I'll let you watch here for a second, and I'll, I'll join you again shortly. To begin the hat, you're just going to pick whatever color it is that you want to be the main color of your of your hat. Insert your hook into any of the stitches, leave a nice long tail end of yarn, and pull that through. We're going to begin with a chain two. And you're going to double crochet in the next stitch. Now the sequence for this is going to be two double crochet and then you're going to skip a stitch. So double crochet, double crochet, skip all the way around. You need to end up with an even number of stitches. For those of you that are really, really new, I'll walk you over, or I'll walk you through the, the double crochet process here in just a second. But we did the chain, which counts as a double crochet, plus a double crochet, and then you skip. For the double crochet, you're gonna yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch, and then you're gonna yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through two. We're gonna go into the next stitch, so you're going to yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then you're going to yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. We are going to skip the next stitch. And then you're going to continue the double crochet, double crochet skip sequence until you've completed the round. So it should look like this. So you've got the two double crochets and then this little space. So at the end you need to finish in an even number of stitches in order to be able to work this pattern in the round. Once you've completed the round, we are going to close this with a uh, slip stitch. So find the chain and you're going to insert your hook into the stitch right after the chain. So at the very top, right after it, and you're going to pull up a loop. So insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then slip stitch. Then you're going to begin round two with a chain of two stitches. So every round begins with a chain two. Now for round number, I guess, yeah, round number two, we're going to work a front post double crochet. So this is your post. You're going to insert your hook behind it to pull the post towards the front. So this becomes a front post double crochet. So like all double crochets, you're going to begin with a yarn over. You're going to insert your hook into the back of the post, not into the stitch, but the post. So like this, yarn over, pull up a loop. And once you have your three loops, you're going to yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through two. The next stitch is going to be a back post double crochet. To make it a little easier, I'm just going to switch hook here. So you're going to insert your hook, much like you would this pink one, and you're going to push the post back. So let's set up again. We're going to yarn over, and you're going to insert your hook from the back part of the fabric towards the front, push the post back, yarn over, and then pull up a loop. Once you have your three loops, you will just close your double crochet with yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through two. In the next stitch, we're going to switch to a front post double crochet, and follow it up with a back post double crochet. And you're going to repeat this same sequence until you complete the round. So that's a front post double crochet, and then back post double crochet. For round number three, I just have to finish this last front post double crochet. And then we're going to close our round. So find the chain, and then you're going to look for that stitch right at the top, so right next to it, and you're going to slip stitch to close the round. And now we're going to chain two. 
Now round number three, we're gonna switch our stitching. So we begin with a front post double crochet for round number two. Round number three begins with a back post double crochet. So insert your hook through the back of the fabric, pull the post back, and then double crochet. The next stitch we're gonna pull towards the front, so it's gonna become a front post double crochet. And then the next one, we continue the sequence. So back post, front post, back post. So we're gonna be alternating the stitch order, I guess, between row, rounds two and three to create that alternating post stitch. For those of you that are using just a single color, instead of doing that chain two at the beginning of the round, you can just continue the front post back post sequence using the chain as a double crochet. So if you need help with this, you can always shoot me an email, um, but that way you don't have to close the round and begin again um, every single round. The reason we're doing this is to create nice even striping. All right, so to do a color switch, I've already switched to white just to make the, the color transition easier to see than it is in the green. But we're going to close the round very similar to what we did previously, but that is going to be our color switch. So once you've finished your double crochet sequence, you're gonna go into that stitch right next to the chain and insert your hook. You're going to yarn over using the new color. Leave a nice long tail end of yarn. You can weave this in later, but then use that new color and pull that through to close your slip stitch. Make sure you tighten all of your stitches before moving on. And now you just complete the rest of the sequence. So you're going to chain two and then continue whether it is a repetition of round two or three. Since I am, what is this, row number five, I begin with a back post double crochet. The round in which I did the color white was round number four. So I did three, three rounds in green, one round in white, and then one round in gray. And then I just can uh, repeat the same sequence. So three in green, one in white, one in gray. At the end of the hat, I'm gonna complete four rounds in green, just to give it that extra bit of length. All of these tail ends, you're just gonna go through and cut them. So make sure that they're nice and long. Uh, you will need to weave these in later. You can leave them if you want to, but it, it, you're gonna be able to see it on the inside of the hat. So. I'll show you how to weave these in for those of you that don't know how um, at the end of the tutorial. But go through, complete all of your striping. Like I said, it's three and then one color, one color, three, one color, one color, and then four. When you get to the last row, you're just gonna close your round. And then we're going to chain one to create a small knot here at the base. Cut a nice long tail. We're gonna use this tail to cinch the, the top of the hat closed. For those of you that have asked about the decreases, I don't do them because I don't like them. Um, you can decrease it if you want to, um, but I don't, I don't like to do that. So <laughs> I'm just gonna show you how to cinch the hat because that is what I do. So you're gonna need your yarn or your tapestry needle. And then the easiest way that I have found to do this is just to uh, stitch into every other stitch. So beginning on whatever stitch you want right next to where you made your knot, just pull your needle through towards the inside of the fabric, skip a stitch, and then come from the back to the outside. So skip a stitch and then go from the outside to inside, skip a stitch and then inside to outside. So you can do this in any way you want. You can skip two stitches, you can do it every other stitch or every single stitch, there we go. I can't speak. Um, but you can cinch this however you want. As long as you insert your needle towards the inside of the hat and then the outside of the hat, it doesn't really matter how many stitches you skip. The more stitches you skip though, you are gonna have gaps up along the top of the hat. Once you've sewn all the way around, you're just gonna pull on the yarn to tighten it up along the top of the hat and then just give it a few stitches to close it up. For those of you using the detachable pom-pom, make sure that you leave a little bit of space along the top. So don't cinch it, cinch it completely tight or you won't be able to attach the pom-pom. It does have a button at the bottom, so I'll show you that a little bit later in, in the video, but there is a button so you can detach it so that whenever you wash your hat, you don't ruin the pom-pom. So because I got a lot of questions about this in the original video, I'm gonna walk you through how I finished the hat um, and how to weave in ends. Now you're just gonna need to make a double knot at the top of the hat. 
and I'm going to speed this section up a little bit because I, I kind of took a minute stitching it. But once you've got your knot, you're just going to put your needle towards the inside of your hat. At least I like to weave in all of the ends on the inside of the hat. You don't have to do this. You can do this however you want. That's just my personal preference. So make sure you pull your needle through and don't poke your fingers. <laughs> so I poke my fingers a lot, so that's why I now use a tapestry needle. <laughs> so, um, all right, so once you're on the inside of the hat, just sew in a square shape. So it's gonna be a superficial stitch along the back side. So you're not gonna insert your needle all the way towards the back of the fabric. It's just along the same side that you are on. So if you're on the inside of the hat, just keep your needle along the inside of the hat, if that makes sense. Um, but just go through. I normally do a bit of a square shape, so I'll sew in one direction and then switch directions for the next stitch, switch directions for the next one, and then come back to close my square. Go around a few times, um, and that's it. That will weave in your ends. You're going to have to repeat this with all of the threads. So each one of your color changes is going to produce two threads. So if you want to make a super colorful mega striped hat, know that you're going to have to weave in a lot of ends. Pom-poms are totally optional. Um, you can either make your own. I have a faux fur pom-pom tutorial, which I'll link somewhere in the, either at the description of the video or up here on the video itself. I added a button to mine to make them detachable. Uh, if you don't want to make them, you can always buy them at the shop. I have, you know, this is the only color faux fur I, I used, um, but those are available and the kit does come with one. So you're gonna put that through on your hat. And then I'll show you what it looks like on the inside as well, because you'll be able to see the little button here. So there you go. And that's it. The PDF pattern for this project is available on the website. You can also find the kit. I'll put all, all of the links down in the description box below. The kit will make three hats. So yeah, uh, more information is available in the listing. You can also find crocheted items because I get a lot of questions about that. So I do have crocheted items. So you can buy this hat in a ton of different colors. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. I will see you all again in the next video.